got fired once from making sandwiches because somebody saw me on a gay demo and they thought that I'd infect the food, so I got fired. I am openly gay at the bar and therefore I can look forward to no preferment and no promotion. I would have been very wary about being open about being lesbian, say about five years ago, because it's hard enough to get a job in engineering if you're black and a woman without being identified as a lesbian. I'd tell them that I had a boyfriend. That he, he was actually a boyfriend of mine from about a year ago. So I kept up with that, yeah. I personally have to survive and to do that, I have to work. And if I can't come out at work, be out at work, then I wouldn't be out at work. I think I've had a, a much better understanding since I've been open at work. Watch him shatter, you're just a step on the boss man's ladder, but you got dreams he'll never take away. On the same boat with a lot of your friends, waiting for the day your ship will come in, and the tide's gonna turn and it's all gonna roll your way. I'll, t I'll tell you something about something that happened in, 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 in the school I was, I was recently supplying it. I went on the Gay Pride March this year, and uh, on the Monday after that, a little boy <laughs> put his hand up in the class and asked me, um, so what were you doing in Southwark on Saturday, sir? And I said, I, I was on a demonstration, and I carried on teaching. And he smiled and carried on with his work. Uh, had he decided to actually take it further, because it's obvious he saw me on the march, I mean, he couldn't have seen me at Southwark and not realise I was on the march. I mean, I would have been prepared to talk about it. Um, and then, I mean, like, obviously, if, if, I, if I did that in a the classroom, there would be, I imagine, some sort of consequences in terms of the school had taken an attitude on it. Oh, that was a, a company where, um I work mainly with, with students from America, and uh, my own company were okay, but they used to hire me out when the work was slack. And another company, um, word got around that I was a lesbian, and I got hauled into the office and told that if I interfered with any of the kids, you know, I'd be out on my bike. There was a lot of media hype at the time about, you know, child molesting, homosexuality, and the two are often linked in the press. Um, lesbian equals queer, queer equals child molester. I think lesbian and gay youth workers are very much more aware than probably most other workers that um, they have to take much more care about the nature of their relationship with those young people because that is something which they're certainly going to be watched for. If we look within the mainstream youth service, there's no doubt about it that uh, often male youth workers will use a sexual dynamic with young women and that is often seen as being quite permissible. So in that sense, we have a very discriminatory way of looking at how youth workers actually work with young people. I didn't state what my sexuality was on any application forms. Um, I desperately needed a job. Um, I didn't know how the companies would react if I was to say um, I'd done voluntary youth work in a gay youth club. Um, so I just put down youth club away um, and said, describe what I'd done without saying who with. I went to some big institution, something like, I can't remember exactly what, but something like the gas board, and uh, I put down a whole load of women's interests. And the old guy, part of an interview panel, said to me, looking at this, Miss Blackwell, anyone might think you were some sort of lesbian. And I just smiled at him. And the interview was wound up in about 15 minutes. Well, for the first, first time at a gay club, I met a bloke, um, the only other tradesman I've ever met at a gay club. And he was working on a building site for about four months and he came open on this building site, came out. And instantly, you know, he was limited to who he could talk to. And by the time, the ne by the next day, they made, they made him drink out of his own mug and everything like that. So eventually he left. Since I've started this job, which is a specifically lesbian and gay job, so I'm probably the most publicly out person in that, in that respect. I've had people who've been reluctant to shake my hand. I've had people who've asked me for uh, a roll-up and then asked me um, not to lick it. I've had personal phone messages that haven't come through and pieces of information that I need uh, for the job haven't got through to me. Well, 
I would say that the attitude of the law to lesbians and to gay men is at best negative and at worst blatantly hostile. Quite specifically, it doesn't give any positive protection to lesbians and gay men against discrimination that uh, employers might exercise against such employees on the ground of their sexual orientation. Yes, ten years ago I had enrolled in a management trainee course at British Home Stores and I was working at their Worthing store. I was also involved with the campaign for homosexual equality in Brighton and with Southern Television, CHE had made a small program about uh, being gay and living in Brighton. I'd been with British Home Stores five days the Friday night, the program was shown. Saturday morning, I was called in to see the management, and their initial decision was to suspend me on full pay while they took some inquiries. They had apparently received complaints, this is the story I was told, following from my appearance on this television program. I was given um, a date to go and see the management, uh, the head office in London, which was the following week. In the meanwhile, the campaign for homosexual equality throughout the country started to mobilise. First of all, we had pickets at the Brighton and the Worthing stores, and then there were pickets throughout the country, including quite a large demonstration here in London at the Oxford Street store of British Home Stores. Tony Whitehead approached us because um, he worked at British Home Stores and had been seen on a TV documentary on gay rights, and they were proposing to sack him. I went along with him to the headquarters of um, British Home Stores, but they absolutely flatly refused to allow me in. So he did go in on his own, and they bullied him and, and actually apparently sat in front of the door so that he couldn't get out, and eventually he felt forced to resign. Ultimately, I was given um, an ultimatum that I had to accept a posting to another store and also not become involved publicly in gay uh, in gay work again. They said it didn't matter at all about my private life. I was not to be identified in the media or in any local campaigning group. They offered me, I think it was Scunthorpe, um, and I felt totally unable to accept these terms and conditions, and I resigned worn out, exhausted and very upset. Well, I think the first thing to do if you're facing discrimination is don't panic. And for instance, if you're asked to resign, don't resign. Do get legal advice and approach your union. Fi find out what's what. Find, get hold of the NCCL, get hold of gay organisations and, and get proper advice. Try, if they are a bit discriminating, try and get it in writing because then it's often possible to fight cases. For gay men, felt that they were having problems at work or any problems connected with employment or unemployment, uh, if they're worried in any way, give us a ring and talk about the problem um, and, uh, and we can maybe discuss a line of action to take from there. Uh, it's always a good idea to discuss the issue first because unless, uh, unless you're filled in with what to do, uh, you can often end up making mistakes um, and, and think afterwards, well, I wish someone had told me I should have done this or that. And the same for lesbian employment rights. Any lesbians who have problems should contact LAR and discuss the problem with them. AIDS has made it a lot worse because, of course, now we have a lot of fears about the possible risks to health of working with gay, gay men in particular, but the prejudice is extended to lesbians. Of course it's absurd, but given the current employment law, it's very, very difficult to fight that. Although there's no Act of Parliament outlawing discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, um, if, for instance, you've been um, in the same job for over a year you, and you're then dismissed, say, for, for something to do with being gay, you can sue for unfair dismissal. The problem with industrial tribunals is that the higher courts have interpreted employment protection laws in an incredibly narrow way. For example, unfair dismissal law is not judged from the point of view of whether or not the dismissal is unfair on the employee but the tribunal has to ask the question, has the employer acted in a way that any reasonable employer would have acted in? 
if the employer satisfies the tribunal that they have acted in a way that any reasonable employer would have acted in, then the case fails and the employee is found not to have been unfairly dismissed. Several cases have clarified that it's perfectly legal to sack someone on the basis of uh, attitudes than being gay or lesbian, and this is very much the problem in my case. It was not that my work record was inadequate, uh, I'd done pretty well in the few days I'd been there, but it was simply that I was identified as being gay and that the staff at the store felt that that was sufficient in itself for them to get rid of me. Not all cases are going to be one. There was a case, for instance, of Louise Boychuk, um, who was a lesbian who wore a gay badge at work and um, was dismissed because of the gay badge. No two ways about it, it wasn't to do with her work. And we took that to an industrial tribunal and she lost, and then we took it to um, an employment appeal tribunal. And again, she lost on the basis of, not that it was a gay badge, but that it was a badge which reasonably might have, co have caused offence. Now, I mean, they couldn't produce anybody at all that had been offended. No person refused to buy insurance because she was wearing a gay badge. But uh, they said that that might have caused, um, been reasonably might have caused um, offence, and therefore it was reasonable to sack her. But don't be too dis depressed by that, because I say there are other cases which have been won, and really NCCL in particular is looking for good employment cases to test that law and actually get things changed. Heterosexism is um, the name of the oppression which um, actually affects all people's lives. Um, it's the oppression which actually tells men and women how they can behave together and how they may not behave together. One important thing that happens to people who don't necessarily identify as lesbians and gay men, but who may have feelings of affection or closeness um, towards people of their same gender, is that they're absolutely terrified to express these feelings or even to have those feelings. And the threat of being labelled lesbian or gay is almost as bad as actually being lesbian or gay and causes people to distance themselves from people of the same gender, which is a very great shame for the majority of the world's population. And that's why gay liberation is an issue for everybody, not just lesbians and gay men. It is true that lesbians and gay men are on the sharp end of heterosexism in that they get special punishments for refusing to live as heterosexuals, but it could also be said that um, lesbians and gay men are survivors of heterosexism because they're the very people who've actually refused for one reason or another, whether they were born that way, whether um, they grew that way for a political decision or whatever the theory is inflicted on us by heterosexuals, um, they're the people who've survived and have refused to live as heterosexuals. Um, I think heterosexism is the name of the whole oppression and anti-lesbianism and homophobia are part of that oppression, they're certainly not the whole thing. Homophobia is the fear of same-sex love and people who practice it. Um, it can be shown in various different ways. For instance, a lot of men in Britain are scared of showing any kind of affection to other men. They won't touch another man except in a fight. Um, Anti-lesbianism, I think, is also linked with a fear of women being independent of men. Of course, in other cultures, um, it may be different. For instance, in the country where I was born, men can walk down the street holding hands. That's socially acceptable. And again, women can show perhaps more affection than is socially acceptable here. But you are expected to get married unless you live in a large city or you're a monk or nun. I was definitely frightened of being uh, even accused of being gay. If you were to accuse uh, someone who was keeping up this uh, macho image of being gay, I mean, they could get really aggressive. You know, 
without a doubt they become violent. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen someone uh, say to another, uh, call another person, you know, a puff or something like that, and instantly he's turned around and got a kick for it. And the person who said it was only joking, you know, and it was a joke, to, and obviously a joke to everybody. Mm, oh yeah, one time I put this pair of jeans on to go home, and um, I was standing by the reception, and one of them grabbed between my legs. I went, oh, I thought I saw a bulge. That was the last thing she said. Yeah. There was actually, but it was just my cheeks. <laughs> I don't think it's at all easy for a lesbian or a gay man to come out at work at the bar. Barristers are no different from any other group of working people in that sense. And the hostility of barristers to lesbians and gays is as marked as any. And like any group of working men, you'll find any group of male barristers, when they get together, will express their anti-gay hostility in crude and extremely unpleasant terms, on the assumption that you go along with that, and uh, also, uh, obviously, as a means of asserting their own heterosexuality, or uh, proving their own heterosexuality. Well, I just think it's um, what they think they have to live up to, that they've got to be assured and authoritative all the time, know what they're doing, make sure they do it properly, and they've got to have a certain kind of status that they have to live up to, especially regarding women and sort of sexual activities. They're often vying with each other about who sort of goes out most and that sort of thing, what sort of relationships they have, and uh, how sophisticated they are in their tastes kind of thing, as far as women go. You know, what you see on TV and films and adverts and everything, what you read in the newspapers and, and all the general media, it sort of uh, perpetrates this idea of heterosexuality and how that, that should be performed and sort of um, created in society. And I think they're just, without really realising it, they're totally influenced by that. Well, there have been two major reports investigations done recently on the representation of lesbians and gay men. There was one done about broadcasting called Gays and Broadcasting and there was another one done by the Campaign for Press and Broadcasting Freedom about printed media and both of those reports showed overwhelmingly that uh, there was a reasonable number of references to gay men, um, almost all in the context of AIDS or as some kind of pathetic tragic figure or as some kind of figure of fun, kind of limp-wristed camp figure. Um, both reports show practically no mentions of lesbians at all. This particular woman in the office was um, saying how wrong it was and if she ever had a gay son that she would chuck him out of the ass and it's wrong to be gay and lesbian and etc etc blah blah blah. Uh, and she was saying um, that you can always recognise gay and lesbian people and they stand out a mile and they walk for minces and lesbians are butch and just can sort of beat up men and all this sort of stuff. Um, I was saying, but how would you know that there isn't a, a gay person in this building or in this office? Um, and she's saying, oh, don't be silly, don't be silly. I said, how do you know I'm not? She goes, oh, of course you're not, if you I know you're not. I said, but how do you know I'm not? And it carried on like this, like me insisting that, how do you know I'm not? And she's saying, of course you're not. She refused to see it. The crux of the thing is that black people feel, I mean, that they need to be on their best behaviour all the time. Mm. Um, and if you're not being on your best behaviour, then you're letting the side down. And I mean, like, being gay is definitely letting the side down because it's not a good thing to do, quote unquote, yeah? Okay. Um, and I think that kind of, like, that's... That, those, that's actually developed myths you know, of its own, so that, I mean, like, now a young black um, child can actually be surprised when they meet a gay black person because as far as they're concerned they can't be such a thing whereas a West Indian oh. child would never dream of thinking in those terms I mean like there are gay people. The most common representation of lesbians in recent the last re last two or three years has been of Greenham common women who are always portrayed as being lesbian and butch and man-hating and totally beyond the pale of all normal civilization. Um, the important thing about representing lesbians and gay men in this way is that you don't have to take the issues that they're talking about seriously. When I started talking about lesbian and gay issues um, with some of my colleagues, both within my union and other unions in the department, 
the, like the looks that I got were just like amazing, sort of like, why don't you shut up, you know? We don't really want to discuss this. Look, we've managed to brush it under the carpet for the last 50 years. Why do you have to raise this sort of thing now? And I think that that's partly fear on their part, that they didn't want to examine their own attitudes, even go as far as maybe examining their own sexuality. So it's something that's much easier not to talk about. Heterosexism has got an awful lot to say about who can have sex with whom, and it presumes that certain groups of people are more sexually active than others, and certain groups of people can, can't restrain themselves more than others, and so on. Um, a good example, if you look at people with disabilities, they're assumed either not to have sexual urges or, or that they should uh, perhaps keep quiet about them. Um, so it would be very unlikely that uh, people with disabilities can also be very active uh, around heterosexism, although some of them certainly are. Employment opportunities may be very restricted for people with disabilities, depending on their particular disability. For instance, a lot of workplaces may be physically impossible to get into. Um, and, and that means that coming out may be even more of a risk if you're likely to be discriminated against in any case quite severely. It's also true that information is not so widely available, say, to partially sighted um, youngsters um, uh, and to, 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 to people with disabilities who are in institutions in general. They just can't get hold of information. So heterosexism works by keeping information about alternative sexualities very hidden anyway. And if you have a disability, that's often uh, twice as true. Well, obviously, the thing is to actually come out and sort of say you're gay and let them sort of judge for themselves what sort of person you are. Because assuming that they've liked you and got on with you while you're pretending to be straight, they shouldn't actually change their attitudes once they know you're a homosexual. It is very difficult for all uh, lesbians and gay men to come out in a, in a working situation, and only very few of us are in a privileged position where we can do that. Um, Obviously, this is one of the reasons that the struggle around heterosexism has been held back, because heterosexism ensures that there are very few of us who can be active around the, the issue of um, that oppression. One of the difficulties that we have with research is that because of discrimination, many, les many lesbians and gay men aren't out. Um, and so actually getting people to be interviewed, to come forward and say, I've suffered discrimination, is not an easy task. Um, I, th I think there needs to be far more wide-scale research um, to, to, that can deal with these problems. I think that a lot of black lesbians and gay men feel that um, you can't always rely upon the rest of the gay community to support you in Absolutely. the situations that, that are difficult. That in, the, in, in, in those circumstances, the best thing to do is to stay out of it. That's not to say that black lesbians and gay men aren't politically active. They are. But and there will be for the two of us there will be several thousand black lesbians and gay men who are doing work all over the country. But it's it's a, it's choosing where you're going, where and how you're going to work. I wouldn't dream of coming out at work because it would just cause a lot of problems. The people there are extremely prejudiced against homosexuality. Although I don't think they're really conscious of it. It's the fact that they just they're not really malicious. It's just that they're totally thoughtless and they don't realise that there's no logic in their sort of attitudes. Mm -hmm. But it could only cause problems because they would sort of pull rank and ostracise you really. You'd be sort of the butt of their jokes when you're not there and that kind of thing. They just wouldn't give you any respect because they're in the majority and you'd be in the minority. I think, I think they would have been astonished, most of them. I think there were one or two there who, if they bothered to think about it, might have um, realised but generally I think they, they took me at face value and I, you know, I looked the part. Another thing you have to remember is that if you come out in one job, then when you apply for your next job, that may very well be held against you. So most of us spend our lives having to make decisions by the day of whether we can come in or out. I always pick my jobs carefully. <laughs> so uh, hopefully I, I, I choose another job. But if it came to the crunch where I did fill in a form, and it was because I worked at a lesbian and gay video co-op. I most probably wouldn't put it on the next form. In my case, um, I'm able to relate more honestly and more closely to my family and friends. 
Of course, um, the experiences of different people vary, and some are rejected as a result of being too open. It depends very much on whom you're coming out to, how secure you yourself are at the time, whether you've got a community um, to provide support. And now there is a growing black lesbian and black gay community in this country, um, centered in the major cities, which can provide some of that support. Um, in, in my case, my family has also been quite supportive, though they don't fully understand the issues around lesbianism and, and gayness. Several um, lesbians that I know have expressed the view that um, it's, it's different for black lesbians to come out than it is for white lesbians simply because, well, because there are pressures outside, outside that you, you can't afford to rely on the white community if you, if you come out because there, there's a whole string of racism out there. Um, and you can't afford to come no, out to your parents because if you do, you risk alienating them. Yes. The, the black community for, for many black lesbians is, is more important than, than the, the family yes. would be for um, yes. black people. But even before you get to the point of like being afraid that, I mean, like the white um, community won't provide the support. I mean, you've got to deal with the fact that, I mean, like, rejecting the family is actually rejecting the support you have at the moment. And I mean, for an awful lot of black people, I mean, like, the family is much more than just that thing that produces you and sends you out into the world. I mean, it's the community. Your uncles and aunts and you know, cousins make up the community. Well, I'll give you an example. It wasn't even a black person, but it was a person from the Caribbean, right? Who, I, I was a volunteer worker at a youth group, and we were taking pictures of the youth group outside for our, our annual report. And a black woman came down the road, and this, this kid freaked, and I thought he was being ridiculous. And he turned around to me and said, you never know who they know. And that, it's, it's, it's very, that's very much true for, 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 for black people, because, I mean, like, I mean, if you're a small minority, I mean, it's scattered all over the place. I mean, like, it's very important to know who you're dealing with, who's who, who's, whose son this is, whose daughter this is, you know, where you come from, etc., etc., etc. And you never do know. I wouldn't have been able to make contact with anyone who was, who, at least who I thought was gay there. Um, it, I didn't feel able to. I think the only, the only way it might have arisen would have been if I'd, say, seen them out somewhere, you know, in a gay bar or something like that. Um, but they, I mean, I think they wouldn't have liked it if I said anything to them at work. It sort of makes it like a conspiracy. You've been part of a conspiracy in the heterosexual sort of sexism. Like, you've been going along with all the attitudes that, well, it's taken for granted that you're a heterosexual unless you actually openly state and confess kind of thing. And so I felt sort of guilty almost that when I was going to tell them, they're suddenly going to realise that I've been lying all the time. And perhaps if in the past they have made the odd thoughtless joke, that perhaps they're going to sort of realise and sort of feel embarrassed about that. And, you know, it's almost as if it's your responsibility for their guilt, when it's really, it's just the, the state of the society we live in that people take so much for granted without questioning. When people heard what had happened, several people come out to me and say, this is a real shame, we feel really sorry. But no one on the staff was prepared to actually stand up and confront the management or speak openly about this. I've definitely become closer to um, my workmates than before I was open. I mean, some of them uh, would defend me before I even had a chance to defend myself, should, anything, should anyone say anything against gays or anything like that. Well, the management's attitude to me being gay uh, seems to be very good. Um, probably, again, because they, they actually know who I am, which is more than what they could say for most of their workers. Although I can't be out all the time, um, the fact that I, that I am out and can live um, openly as a lesbian, among other lesbians, um, and has meant, obviously, that I can be myself, which is, after all, um, a basic um, human right. And also that I've now begun to realise that there are very strong political reasons for working around this particular issue. And anyway, there's a great thrill always to know that I wasn't sucked into heterosexism.
Secret loves no secrets Open door.